I have seen the PAP's plan for the country. The government's economic package is inadequate. As an economist, I can tell you that it will only kick the problem further down the road. But we in the Reform Party have substantial proposals and we have listened to you and incorporated your concerns into our solution for you. Our plans will build Singapore back better and we will build it back fairer. And I have also seen their plans for you on the ground, which have zero substance. I know what you need and I know what will work. Why doesn't your PAP team seem to know? Because all the PAP wants is your vote, so that it can turn around and say, look, the people love us. They have given us the mandate to carry on as before. Dear voters, don't make the mistake of thinking that the PAP is the same thing as your country, because it isn't. Don't make the mistake of thinking that the PAP is Singapore, because it isn't. You are Singapore. Don't make the mistake of thinking that PM Lee is Singapore, because he really isn't. Don't make, you are Singapore. We are Singapore, together we are Singapore. And you can love Singapore and still hold your government to account. You can love Singapore with all your heart and at the same time fall out of love with the PAP. Because, after all, the PAP shows you over and over again through its every action that it doesn't love you. And it is holding the snap election now only because traditionally they score very well when they hold the polls during a national crisis. This was a reckless decision by heartless people. As I said earlier, this is the third election that Reform Party has stood in the PM's constituency of Unmokyo GRC. We stood here in 2011 and 2015. My late father, J.B. Jayaratnam, affectionately known by Sing to Singaporeans as JBJ, founded what was then the brand new Democratic Party, the Reform Party, in 2008, and we have brought his legacy here again in 2020. Cheng Sun is particularly dear to that legacy. Victory was snapped from JBJ, most people would say stolen, in 1997, through a combination of dirty tricks and actual election offences, the infamous polling station incident. Later, Cheng Sun was made to disappear with a stroke of a pen from the Prime Minister's office, and its voters were absorbed into Ang Mo Kyo. The government is still making your constituencies appear and disappear at the stroke of a pen, you have given me your feedback from the ground, and this issue of being gerrymandered is one that particularly aggravates you. And I think you have a right to be angry. As well as gerrymandering, the PM has removed one of your representatives at the stroke of a pen. But the constituency of Ang Mo Kyo remains at 185,000 voters. Last election, I said that Lee Sian Lung is hiding in a six-man GRC. He is still hiding amongst 185,000 of you, but now with one less MP. You have told me also how infrequently you see your existing MPs and how inadequate your constituency sessions are. Now that situation will get worse. Mr. Lee is not here for you. He is still paying dodgeball. <coughs> he refuses to answer questions. 
All of his energy is concentrated on holding snap poles, but he can time and fix to his advantage. If I could send a message to my father in heaven, where he is no doubt pushing for better condition for the junior angels, it would be this. Dad, I am here in Angmokio. You lost seven times before you got elected. I also will not give up. I will hold my head high as a Singaporean. All the injustices, the pockets of poverty, the lack of compassion. It is still the same today and even worse than you had feared. But I will not give up until I have made a difference. Rest in peace, Dad. There are many of us here carrying on the fight, trying to make it right for your beloved Singapore. Now I am asking for your vote under vastly different circumstances to most elections. You may feel powerless and you may feel it is hopeless and you may feel afraid, but I can tell you that it is the greatest patriotic duty to hold your government up to account. I and my team can only hold the government accountable with your help. And we demand transparency and workable solutions that benefit you, not us. Everything we do and suggest is constructive and positive. The PAP will tell you there's the risk of a freak result. Go Chok Tong will have you believe that if you vote opposition to show your anger, then you may un unintentionally vote in an alternative party. I can tell you that this election has been the hardest yet for any alternative party to contest. So this is the useful fear mongering. PM Lee and his team are the MPs who are so good that they gave you a town council manager who was a cheat and a fraud. He was convicted for his offenses. Many of the issues on the ground are the same as last election. Nothing seems to have been fixed except his sub, except his miselection. If you give the PAP an overwhelming mandate once more, you must logically expect more of the same. Of being cheated and ignored and now endangered. I am different. I truly care about my country and you, the voters of Anmo Kyo. I have sacrificed for my country, and I want nothing more than to serve you, the residents, and to make your voice heard in Parliament and your life on the ground better. You can make a real difference here by voting for Reform Party. And if the unintended consequences that we win, well, we will do a better job than the missing team in white. Your future is in your hands. We can build a fairer society for all with Reform Party's input. Do make sure you vote. Your vote really does matter. It's a precious right for you to use as you see fit. Of course, I hope that you will vote for us, the Reform Party, on Friday. Thank you for listening. Okay, I'll pass. Um, Andy will now be addressing you. Hi, thank you, Kenneth. Thanks for the wonderful speech. Hi, uh, my name is Andy Chu. Nice to see you all, you all tonight. Um, I would like to um, have my speech in English for the Angmokyo GRC voters. Dear voters of Angmokyo GRC, it is my pleasure to speak to you tonight. I believe every one of you wants answers from the government. We, the Reform Party, is here to represent you in the parliament. And we need your vote to make it a success. I joined the Reform Party so as to serve the people and to continue with JBJ's legacy. From there, we have been walking the ground, meeting with a lot of residents whom had shared many of their concerns with regards 
to meeting their daily needs of their daily necessities. Some of which that I spoke to are of age 70 years and above. Well, it makes me think, is it actually a necessity for these people to work at their age? While I was speaking to them, I tried finding the reasons as to why. Why do they need to work at this age? They gave me a weird look. They answered, Young man, I work because I need the money. I am not exercising, neither is it because I enjoy staying out. This is the answer I get from them. They added to say, due to the aging, due to their, their aging, their stamina are not as good as before. And if the financial conditions allows, they would not want to work at this age. We have also seen many of our citizens on the streets picking up drink cans and picking up cardboards. Haven't we? These are the problems the aging population is facing. These problems they faced are then passed on to their children. The children will need to care for their parents' well-being and health. This falls under filial piety and there shouldn't be any doubt about it. Agree? Yes. However, to have a conclusion on this, their children will need to be in the workforce. They will need to engage a domestic caretaker. Therefore, it comes back again that money is needed to fulfill the child's filial piety towards their parents. The majority of us facing this issue, there is something not right about how the incumbent is managing our country. Do you agree? Yes. So, what is the Reform Party going to do? The Reform Party proposed that citizens age 65 and above will get $500 per month. This money will come from the surpluses. As for our children who are in the workforce, they are facing stiff competition from the foreigners. This will definitely be an uphill task for them to put food on the table. In our manifesto, we have also mentioned that we will propose a minimum wage to better take care of our citizens and at the same time, we will increase the salary of foreign workers. In return, by increasing the workers' pay, in increasing the foreign workers' pay, the companies would then prioritize Singaporeans before considering employing the foreign workers. This applies to certain job industries. Examples of such industries would include managerial posts in MNCs, or established organizations. Additionally, to assist Singaporeans to better cope with the losses due to COVID-19, the Reform Party is proposing to suspend GST from now until 2021. With this, we will also be doing a review on removing GST on essential items and necessities such as rice, oil, and baby diapers. This includes milk formulas. We hope with the above proposals that we have, we 
we can get your mandate. We need your vote to build back better, fairer. Please vote for the Reform Party Ang Mo Kyo team. Thank you. Thank you, Andy, for that inspiring speech. I'll now pass it over to Noraini, who will uh, be speaking next. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Kenneth. My name is Noraini Binti Yunus. I'm the treasurer of the Reform Party. I'll speak first in Malay, just a short uh, briefing before I'll turn to English. Assalamualaikum. Saya Noraini Binti Yunus. Saya mewakili Reform Party. Saya juga adalah seorang bendahari Reform Party. Pada tahun ini kami berbahagia dapat mendampingi anda dari Angmo KJRC. Walaupun begitu sengit eh, kami menghadapi Encik Lee Sen Lung sebagai uh, peneraju uh, PAP. Tapi kita tidak gentar dan tidak kucur untuk uh, melawaninya. Tapi kita cuba yang sedaya upaya kami. Sekarang saya akan berbual dalam bahasa Inggeris sebab apa saya dengar mereka agak cemburu. Bila saya berbual dengan bahasa Melayu, mereka tidak begitu faham. Jadi kalau pun uh, anda perlu merasa ter, macam terkecil ataupun tersinggung bila saya bercakap bahasa Inggeris dan tidak memahami pula, saya harap bersabarlah semuanya. Yeah, good evening ladies and gentlemen. I'm Noraini. As I said, I'll be speaking in first Malay but now I'd like to revert to English. And as Mr. Kamal said, uh, that he has the legacy through his father, Mr. JBJ. I also have some legacy behind me because my father was then the president of the Singapore Workers' Union. And he had been with the Barisan Socialist that was under Mr. or Dr. Lee Siu Cho. At that time, he was part of PAP before he was kicked out, you know, in history. And even then, he had garnered some uh, very good MPs who had won uh, the constituency that they were contesting. I think about 13 of them had uh, won in 1963 before they decided to walk out during one of those sessions in Parliament just to protest. At the time, Lee Kuan Yew had played up his political card very well. He had turned on his full blast onto the leader of the socialist, Barisan Socialist, and Dr. Lee Sucho didn't win the seat. Because of that, uh, the rest of the team that went into the parliament at walked out. I believe in that circumstances, there's no, there were nobody, there was nobody else left to become a balanced parliament. So right now, totally is so lopsided. Even with WP as the opposition MP, they are not able to push through any balanced argument against any of those, um, you know, policies that is extremely uh, are really very unfair to us. Right now, it's even worse because of the COVID nineteen. We have no say. We have not much. Um, you know, determined on our side. But come this election, even though unfair as it is, we hope our very best to garner as much vote as we can so that we can push through our agenda. And it's to me a very balanced agenda, a very fruitful discussion every now and then where we were uh, walking our rounds. We talked to residents, we talked to those reporters as well as our supporters from other constituencies that wants to know, that wanted to know about how we have been, you know, promoting our you know, manifesto especially. But right now, uh, apart from the manifesto, we'd like to go back a bit on what happened during COVID-19 when the first circuit breaker phase one was imposed. A lot of us were caught very unaware, you know. A lot of jobs were stopped, you know, because you cannot go on. And for some of those under, you know, those essential services, we were restricted by a lot of rules and regulation. And most of us stayed at home. And for me, being the call center agent, working for McDonald's and McDonald's closed down, I was stuck at home for about a week or so. I have to use up all my annual leave. And now when I'm campaigning, I'll be even further you know, using my annual leave, which I was told lately that my supervisor or my manager said, uh, I really have no more annual leave. As such, the campaign for general election 2020 will be a very expensive one for me. Because I'm kind of... Uh, uh, daily rated, you know, so I'll be on no pay leave for most of the time. But I will not be um, pulling back all the stops because even, you know, as such, I get a very good support from uh, members of the public, from members of my community who had really pushed up our, you know, front, hoping that we will balance the government because it's so lopsided, so unfair and so 
bitterly, you know, kind of gerrymandered. Every now and then we see our constituents being readjusted. Our stronghold was like wiped away under our feet. And as such, we really have to work from scratch again to build up the support group, the groundwork, as well as the power base. But I know, you know, I was very thankful because our resources had not been too curtailed by either COVID or even the gerrymandering or even any form of prejudices. We have a more open society, quite mature politically. And even the youngsters told me that they are new voters. I wish them very well to exercise their hands at voting. Because right now, a lot of those online media, especially TikTok, and as well as Facebook, WhatsApp, group chats, all are media savvy youngsters, first time voters, I think. And even Twitter, even though they told us the main group will be in the mid range of 30 plus, they still have young voters going on to Twitter. With such e rallies like now we're doing, will be very much viewed by youngsters, either the first time voters or those who are technically savvy. And uh, on the economic front, I believe uh, some of them may be working, whereas the rest are on their parents, uh, you know, affording them a lifestyle. It's good that you can vote now because it shows a new level of uh, attainment that you have gone through, especially in just age alone that you have matured. So hopefully this coming uh, election, the outcome will not be too biased, not too lopsided, and we can balance the whole scenario where we have more people in government expressing different views, this different aspiration, as well as different uh, needs. Because with the new voters, even there are new voters from overseas who have been newly you know, uh, naturalized, I hope they would support us opposition and not be too beholden on the PAP government who had brought them in. Because right now the pandemic, you know, worldwide, will require new handling and the foreign worker dormitory issue right now in Singapore will not be too good on new citizens because they'll be competing for resources like medical, you know, jobs, as well as even the basic necessities once uh, they're free from the COVID threat. I mean, phase two now ongoing, they will still need food, they will still need recreation facility, they'll still need transportation, you know, and if they're overwhelmed, you know, with this COVID as well as other issues, most of us will not be able to survive well. You know, we'll be so much threatened. So hopefully we will get on with our life as much as we can and please vote for the Reform Party. I'm here to serve you. My name is again Noraini Binti Yunus and I hope the Reform Party will even flourish. Thank you. Thank you, Noraini, for that um, very... Um, incorporating a lot of your family history, which was very interesting. Uh, now uh, I'll call upon uh, Charles Yeo to speak. Okay, Charles, um, yeah, yeah, a lawyer. Charles, you have been... Yes. Oh. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you everyone for the positive uh, response. Unlike what state media claims, I, which has also misreported my marital status showing how bad they are at getting basic facts. I believe I was reported as uh, being married with one child when in actual fact I'm single. The first point I want to begin with is that, uh, that thank you so much I want to thank each and every one of the persons who have messaged me and for the overwhelmingly positive response. Even today, as um, you know, there were there were there were persons uh, who came to me to ask for my autograph, and also the the main point I want to make is that this election is not about any individual. It's not about any political party. This election is about the value system that girds our society. What is the moral underpinning of the, the value system that we want to choose as a society? In the course of this campaign, I, I mean, uh, whilst I've been through a lot of uh, stuff in, in, in my life, I think this campaign was honestly one of the biggest adventures I ever embarked on because we found ourselves, I really, for the first time, um, I mean, I had long been, uh, you know, researching about or writing about how the PAP has systematically subverted democracy. But I saw this firsthand really as in at the highest possible level. 
from the fact that you know we are we are really lacking resources to how people would pull out from being a sand force due to fear of their children being um, you know persecuted or being affected in terms of their career progression and that is because the society of singapore has been systematically organized in such a manner as to create a crushing culture of fear in the first part of the speech, I want to talk about how Singapore's ideology is really a strange hybrid of East and West, which has been commented as being, um, you know, the worst of East and West. Whilst Socrates did not advocate democracy, no doubt Socrates would, be, would really face palm when he saw Singaporean society, particularly the Singaporean education system. That is because for Socrates, he believed that education was produced through a Socratic dialogue, which is not present in the educational system today. And we, you see that you know, the, elect, the electors, especially the median age of the electors, who are, which is 43, have gone through the Singapore education system and they have really been gaslighted and subject to all the state propaganda and the lie of uh, pragmatism and in inverted commas, which I will later on expose has been no more than neoliberalism and a modern day version of, uh, in fact, Ayn Rand's dream state. The PAP's ideology, as Andy has pointed out, is morally bankrupt because it would also offend Confucian ethics. In Confucian ethics, which I, I mean I weave in in my impromptu speech, filial piety is considered the, the, the topmost or the most important of the, of the hundred virtues. Which are, which are discussed in the Luan Yu, which is also which is the Analex by Confucius. The society of Singapore is morally bankrupt because like a lot of the other opposition parties have pointed out, nothing concrete is done. And the illustration is best seen in Tin Pei Ling's recent claim where she talked about, about uh, finding a job for 80 year old person. The reform party begins from the premise that, you know, Requiring a person at 80 years old or effectively requiring a person to work is not acceptable by any decent moral yardstick. It is not acceptable. And the, the reason why a lot of persons will be wondering, why are we harping on about this, this uh, issue of persons who are elderly having to work? And the answer is because a lot of these elderly persons actually come from lower income strata. Based on the PAP's value system, which I have uh, expound, you know, I discussed about in terms of their ordering of society, it, it becomes very logical according to the PAP value system of assigning a value to a person based on how much economic value you can create that these elderly are forced to work. Because when they were young, they, they could generate physical labor, but when they become old, they are effectively uh, very weak and feeble, you know, so they are not able to generate physical labor anymore. So in the eyes of the state narrative, it is largely, uh, they are viewed as useless. This offends principles of, you know, the major world religions as well, because, you know, if we, if we are not going into that or saying that we endorse any religion because the Reform Party is a liberal or broad-based umbrella. But I think it is very important to know that, for example, drawing uh, examples from Christianity, you know, for example, or Islam uh, and even Buddhism, we can agree that there is a broad consensus that the PAP's value system has, has really gone way beyond. So I will just give three brief examples. From Buddhism, obviously Buddhism encourages persons to, to reduce attachment to, to temporal things. Whereas the PAP comes up with an ideology that largely the, the biggest metric of a person's value is his economic, is his economic value that he generates. So the PAP views persons as a means to an end rather than an end in itself. Secondly, for Christianity, okay, there is a verse that said that, you know, it is easier for a rich man to enter it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to, to enter heaven. So it already runs contrary to the PAP's value system, which elevates and emphasizes on making the rich richer and the poor poorer. As regards Islam, the point is that, you know, there is a duty. One of the five pillars is zakat. Zakat 
is one of the recipients of zakat. The, the institution of zakat implicitly organizes and I, I mean recognizes the need to give back to the society. So the question is that, of course, you know, um, this um, amongst the Muslim community, there's been a lot of debate about whether about whether uh, Muis, whether the rightful recipients of the zakat under Islamic law are able to receive the zakat uh, because they, they went and they weren't denied. And of course, you guys can refer to the internet controversy regarding that. But my point is that, you know, at the end of the day, a vote for the PAP is a vote which shows that you don't take your religion seriously. All right. And it's a vote that shows that, you know, you, you want to affirm this kind of society to continue. So uh, returning on, the other point I would like to make is that legal principles such as Blackstone's ratio and the presumption of innocence had been offended by the, by the crime control model, which is very, uh, you know, I, I mean, for one of a, to be very honest, you know, I think we have to say it as it is. The crime control model of the PAP, which, which inverts the presumption of innocence, which means that, uh, you know, innocent men, are, this is a topic that, you know, if you guys look at Make It Right for Singapore, which you can buy from our store, Kenneth's father was very, very passionate about. The majority of his speeches, and in fact, three chapters of the book are, are devoted to discussing this topic. The main point is that um, the PAP creates a system where where it emphasizes, just like the Nazi value system, it emphasizes on, on portraying, punishing uh, criminals who are viewed as the lower tier, lowest tier of society. But typically, the criminals are targeted for, for being from poor backgrounds. And this is a matter that, you know, really a uh, wealth of research has been done on. And the idea is that they want to, to in Chinese, it, it is like sa yi jing bai which is like they want to scare a lot of people. You know, they want to say that, oh, um, the society, but to be honest, matters like, you know, the Tang Wee Song kidney and have, have increasing, and also the issue, the controversy over good grades and molesters. The, the molesters with good grades have brought this issue to the forefront. I'm not going to bore you guys with a uh, discussion on the law on this matter, but Blackstone's ratio is essentially to say that it is better that nine persons are, uh, con uh, that nine innocent person, that, that nine guilty persons go free, then one innocent man be punished. And this race, this pr legal principle has really been violated in Singapore for the purposes of perpetuating the state's narrative. As I only have about two more minutes, I uh, I mean about I believe I have uh, one more one and a half more minutes. The conclusion I want to, in this remaining one and a half minutes, I just want to touch on the foreigner issue and to say that, you know, the PAP, just like how it demonized a lot of critics of the PAP throughout century, I, I mean, throughout uh, decades, the PAP has always portrayed persons who criticize it as uh, extremists, you know, and, and uh, xenophobes. And that is, that could not be further from the truth. I'm not advocating, and I believe the Reform Party is not advocating for the mass expulsion of foreigners or the ill treatment of foreigners, but we are merely saying that the government's legitimacy is based on putting the citizens first. This is a principle that has really persisted since time immemorial, even in the, the, you know, the, the writings of Greek philosophers and also um, um, the writings of Confucius and the, the basis of the mandate of heaven. And if the government has failed, just like how my point of view like is that the government's duty to its own people is very similar to the duty of persons under the law, the Maintenance of Parents Act, children to maintain their aged parents, and the duty under the Women's Charter for a man to, uh, to maintain his wife in the, throughout the subsisting course of the marriage, and also the duty of the two parents to maintain the child. It is a non-negotiable duty and that duty has to be put first. If the society is offering $235 million of scholarships to foreigners, whilst a lot of persons, is, and these foreigners later on go on to get jobs and compete with Singaporeans, and the general perception is that Singaporeans have been marginalized, then there is not only a moral basis for voting the PAP out, there is also a rational or self-centered justification for voting the PAB out. Therefore, I implore all voters of the Ang Mokyo GRC to exercise your vote and to really respect democratic institutions and or rather vote in 
the five of us who represent a team that will not just give lip service to democracy. And we want to urge all of you to make it right for Singapore. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Um, certainly, Beth was, uh, I heard you say about the rich man uh, passing through the eye of a need, a camel could pass through. A, that was certainly about JBJ's sentiment. Now, we, uh, last but not least, we pass on to Darren. Darren, you have the, the mic. Darren? Hello? Are you there? Darren? Can anybody find him? Hello. Hi, Darren. It's your. Uh, you have the mic now. Okay. It's your speech. Kali Manukum, Salamat Malam, voters of Amokyo GRC. Amokyo, 集选区选民，晚上好。我要阐述我们党的理念。我们革新党是建设性的反对党，并不是为了反对而反对。我们党是要加强对政府的问责。We are constructive opposition. We don't oppose for the sake of opposing. We are like a co-driver, just in case if the government has lost its way, we will be there to remind them. We want to act as a check and balance to the government. I believe Singapore will be more conducive to live and work if the society is more inclusive as a whole, as it should begin by having a pluralistic government. By having an alternative voice in parliament, this will ensure that the bill can be debated vigorously before they are implemented. It is also part of the democratic process, the freedom of citizens, rights of citizens to take part in election. I think if the society is more inclusive, the life of Singaporeans and work will be more helpful to Singapore. And this should be from the beginning of the government. 让国会有多一把声音，这将确保法律在实施之前能够进行更多、更有力的辩论。As Singapore is connected to global world, it is a favorable ground to attract foreigners to work and live in Singapore. One important factors that attracted foreigners to work in Singapore. Is the nominal currency exchange, which has been very tenable in Singapore, as more and more foreigners seek employment opportunity in Singapore, many Singaporeans seems to be displaced. Some of them, foreigners, come with bogus degree. The rest graduated from questionable institutions that are never verified by the proper authority. This creates resentment and dilemma for Singaporeans. While I'm not against foreigners working in Singapore, but I think governments should regulate the number of foreigners working in Singapore. There are many jobs, S pass, E passes. These are the jobs that a lot of Singaporeans can do, and will be willing to do. 
government can actually incentivize the employers by subsidizing certain percentage of their salary to encourage employers to employ older Singaporean. We, the work, we, the Reform Party, believe no compassionate government should give away jobs or employment opportunity to foreigners ahead of Singaporeans. We should always give priority to Singaporeans first. 45 to 55 age group. Singaporeans of this age group is very vulnerable as they have to support their parents who are in the range of 75 to 80 and the children 10 to 15 years old and their wife, housewife. Most of this group of people are still servicing their housing HDB mortgage loan and have very little savings when this COVID-19 pandemic situation strikes. Many families are not prepared financially and some are forced to even use the credit card facilities to cope with the daily expenses. Some taxi drivers that we have met complain that the COVID-19 situation that they only earn a meager wages of less than $20. But if these people are retrenched, they may not be able to find a suitable job soon as they will need to learn a new skill set which is very challenging for them and even if they have gone for training, they may not have suitable jobs for them. This group of people will have constantly to compete with the younger workforce who are more computer literate. We are first class nation, but not first-class parliament. For a nation to progress further, people are, feel, are free to express their views. And it is a good thing that our Amokyo team, our Amokyo team represents this diversity and our thoughts are just as coherent. To all Amokyo's GRC voters, I hope to help you eliminate the fear in you. Do not be fearful. Don't let the fear overwhelm you, especially civil servants and those working in the SAF and police force. Even if the opposition were to become government, we still have very strong civil service. The permanent secretaries are all very capable. And I want to remind you that voting is one of the rights of the citizens. You are just exercising your rights. And I want to assure you that your vote is secret. Your vote is safe. And if you want to see positive changes, vote for the opposition. Vote for Reform Party. You are actually voting for a better future for your children and, gener and your grandchildren. If I am elected as your MP, I guarantee you that I will quit my jobs and businesses to be a full-time MP. And you can contact me any time of the day via phone or WhatsApp. I will meet you to solve all your problems. And I will donate half of my MP's allowance to set up an employment centre to help the unemployed residents to find a decent jobs. And I will also set up a tuition centre and give free tuitions to all the needy children in Amokyo GRCs and now definitely attend all parliamentary session and not absent myself unnecessarily. And in the parliament, I will ask tough questions like what's the reserve of our states and what's the senior management salary of Tomase Holdings and GIC. So, Hong Mao Chiao Ji Xuan Xi Xuan Ming. 请你们不要胆怯，拿出你们的勇气来，让我们一起创造奇迹。星期五投票的那一天，为了你的孙子跟孩子的美好将来，请投革新党一票。谢谢，Thank you very much. Thank you, Jaron. Great speech. So, everybody. Uh, Thank you very much to our uh, 
candidates for their speeches. And uh, thank you, voters of Ambo Kyo, for listening. If you'd like to learn more, in a few hours' time, we'll be into cooling off day, and uh, we won't be able to post any more. Uh, if you would like to learn more about our manifesto, uh, please uh, go to our website, uh, reform.sg, and the party's Facebook page. You'll also be able to find our speeches tonight there. If any of you are wondering how uh, we will be able to pay for our promises, I think we have explained it uh, very well there. Uh, we propose that um, the reserves, which are calculated, are probably around $1.5 trillion. If we took a, cent a percentage of that every year, which would uh, basically be less than the interest that we would earn, uh, just as in Norway, the Norwegian Pension Fund uh, deducts or pays 4% to the government for spending on the people, that would fund all of our programs with money left over to spare. So don't worry, all our proposals are fully costed. This government is deceiving you if it is... Uh, you think that there will be an easy, quick recovery from COVID. We need a new deal. We need to build back better and fairer. Vote for the Reform Party. Thank you. Technical administrator, would you like to uh, cut off?